action potentials. So this is probably a big concern for a lot of students in that action potentials is this process that has quite a lot of steps. It has a couple of different proteins and membranes and it's easy to get confused. So in this video, we're just going to slowly go through what all the parts to an action potential are and how it links to this idea of neurons. Okay. So let's start off by saying why we need an action potential. How does it tie into anything we already know? Okay. Well, in the previous video, we mentioned that there are these cells that we call neurons, right? And that they have the function of transmitting electrical impulses from their nucleus or sorry, from their body, from the head of their, of the cell, all the way down to the terminal buttons, right? So you have to transmit electrical impulses and action potential is the, the process that allows for these electrical impulses to move from one area to the other. Okay. And the first thing to understand is that an action potential is just a change in the membrane voltage of part of an axon. So that might seem a little bit abstract. So you're changing the charge or the voltage across one specific area of an, a neuron, okay, of an axon. And when you add together loads of action potentials, right? So I'm, each color is a new action potential that basically is going to lead to the electrical impulse spreading down the neuron. Okay. So electrical impulses is just a series of action potentials. So electrical impulse is just equal to many action potentials. And as we're going to talk about each action potential kind of triggers the next one, which is why that you, you can just remember what one action potential does, and then you'll understand the entire body of the cell. Okay. So electricity is just a change in the charge or the voltage across a membrane. Okay. So let's have a look at the membrane we're interested in. What we're doing now is that we're looking at one half of an axon, right? So if you think of, if this is an axon, right, this is a tube, it's going to have a cell membrane down here that has a bunch of, of phospholipids, right? You get the idea, phospholipids all the way down here and all the way up here. Now, we're only going to look at what happens on one of these membranes because it's just the same process happening on the other side. So I'm just going to delete this for now. Okay, so within this axon membrane, you have th three different important proteins. The first one is a voltage-gated sodium channel. channel. Okay. So the, the a channel protein that can do facilitated diffusion. The second one is a voltage gated potassium channel, voltage gated potassium or K plus channel. Right. And then the third one is a sodium potassium ATP ACE. Okay, so this is this is a, a membrane protein. Now I'm just going to delete the labels just so that I have some space. Okay, so those are the three different proteins that we have in an axon membrane. Now the purpose of an axon membrane or of an action potential is to change the voltage across a cell or across an axon membrane. So what determines the voltage that we have across a axon? Well, let's put up a graph here where on the X axis, I have voltage, sorry, in the Y axis, I have voltage measured in millivolts. And on the X axis, I have time when the cell is resting. Okay. So when it is at what we call resting membrane potential, the voltage across this membrane is negative 70. And you have to remember specifically that number. Okay. Now, why is it negative 70? The reason why is because you have a lot more positive charge outside the cell. Okay. So in general, there's a high concentration of sodium outside the cell at all times. Okay. So there's a high concentration of Na plus sodium where there is a low concentration inside the cell. This means that there's a concentration gradient in sodium, more positive outside. However, there's another, um, ion, the potassium, which is in a high concentration inside the cell. Okay. So at all times, there's a high concentration of potassium inside the cell and a high concentration of sodium outside the cell. So that's important. 
Now, the reason why there's a negative 70 millivolts inside the cell is because, first of all, there's a lot more sodium than there is potassium, right? So there's more, there's just more plus in, on the outside than there is plus on the inside. And then the inside also has negatively charged proteins. So negative proteins. Now, you don't have to know more than that. Just be able to kind of recall that word, negative, negatively charged proteins on, this, um, on the inside of the axon, which means that it's going to be more negative. Okay, now when the cell is not doing anything, it is at what we call resting membrane potential. Then what will happen is that there will be a stimulus. Now what this means is that the inside of the axon, right, remember the, 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 the voltage always refers to the inside of the axon, is going to increase in voltage, okay? Now there are different reasons, different reasons for this stimulus. Um, but you, and we're going to go into what exactly those stimuli can be later. But for now, just understand that something is going to cause the membrane voltage to go up. And if this membrane voltage reaches a specific threshold, okay, a specific level, so it has to reach a certain level, typically it's like negative 55 millivolts, then we're going to start this action potential, okay? So action potentials only happen if the stimulus is strong enough that the threshold is reached. Then what's going to happen? The first thing that happens is something called depolarization, okay? Depolarization. And in depolarization, what's going to happen is that these voltage-gated sodium channels, right? So voltage-gated means that they depend on sodium, are going to open because the voltage reached negative 55. And when these sodium channels open, right, you can imagine that that's going to cause sodium to flow down its concentration gradient. So up until now, these were closed, but when the threshold is reached, they will open and sodium will flow into the cell, which is why you're introducing more positive inside the cell and hence the membrane voltage is going to go up until it reaches roughly 30 millivolts, okay? That's depolarization. Then after that, once the cell reaches roughly 30 degrees, uh, sorry, 30 millivolts, these sodium channels will start to close. Okay, so at this point, the Na channels close and the potassium channels open. Open, okay. So what's that going to cause? Well, that will cause these, so these are going to open, right? And so potassium is going to flow out of the cell right? Because there's a higher concentration of potassium inside the cell. So it flows down its concentration gradient. And if you're losing plus, the inside of the membrane is like if you're doing minus plus, right? That's going to cause the membrane voltage to go all the way down again. Okay, because you're losing positive charge simply by facilitated diffusion. So this is what we call repolarization. Repolarization. Okay, it's written here more neatly. Now, this membrane voltage is actually going to go all the way beyond uh, this negative 70. It's actually going to go past it to around negative 90 millivolts. And then from here, we then have our final step. So what we've done, right, is that we've allowed for sodium to flow into the cell and potassium to flow out. And we said that it's important that we have these concentration gradients, right? So what is next going to happen is that this sodium-potassium ATPase, right, so let's just write out that out in case you forgot it. So sodium, potassium, ATPase is going to use ATP. It's going to do active transport where it will pump three Na plus out of the cell and two K plus into the cell or into the axon. Okay, so that's important. It's two potassiums are exchanged for three sodiums. Now, why do we move them in this direction? Well, we've lost potassium to the outside, so we want to bring that back in, i.e. two potassium in, and we brought potassium sodium into the cell, but we want it on the outside. So we're just going to use energy to reestablish that. Now, because you are losing more positive, there's three pluses going out and only two pluses going in, that means that effectively the inside of the membrane is going to become more negative, right? So the membrane voltage is slowly going to creep back to the resting membrane potential. So that's what we call the refractory period, okay? So where the resting membrane potential is being restored. Now, the refractory period is important because 
it is the period where you can't launch a new action potential, okay? Because you can't reach this threshold again. So it's a way of preventing a neuron from kind of cons constantly firing uh, more and more neurons and more and more action potentials, right? The, the, it needs to chill out at one point so that the, the, the membrane voltage can be reestablished. So let's just quickly go through it all again. Resting membrane potential is where the cell isn't doing anything. It's just kind of maintaining these concentration gradients. We then have a stimulus that's going to cause the sodium, sodium voltage gated sodium channels to open. Sodium will flow into the cell because of the concentration gradient, making the cell more positive in depolarization. Then these sodium channels will close and the potassium channels will open, right? Because they're also voltage gated. So once it reaches plus 30, that's their signal to open. That's going to cause sodium to stop coming in and potassium to start flowing out, right? Which means that we have no plus going in, but loads of plus going out, which means that the membrane voltage will go down in repolarization. And then once we reach uh, roughly 90 degrees, we're going to have um, sodium potassium ATPAs. It's going to start doing active transport where it exchanges 3 Na plus for 2 K plus. Okay, and that's how we restore back to this resting membrane potential. So those are all the steps of an action potential. Um, you specifically are told to be able to analyze an oscilloscope showing the traces of resting potentials and action potentials. Um, all this means is basically what we've already done. So an oscilloscope is basically something that measures the voltage across two areas. Okay, so this is an oscilloscope and it has these two these two areas that can like sense voltage and they're basically going to produce a graph that looks like this. Okay. So you, you probably just are going to be asked like what's happening at this point, 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 and then just relate it to the different proteins in the membrane. So I hope that made sense. You just have to be able to describe why we have action potentials and how they're caused individually.